Hi, my name is Haney Berlesi and I'm an immigration attorney and I'm here today to talk to you about conditional permanent residence. What is conditional permanent residence? Well, normally a permanent residence card or a green card is issued for 10 years. If you obtained your green card based on marriage to a U.S. citizen, and that marriage was less than two years old at the time the application for permanent residence was approved, you will receive a conditional permanent residence card, which is valid for only two years. Now, this conditional permanent residence card is essentially the same as a full 10-year green card in terms of it allows you to work for any employer in any capacity. It allows you to travel freely in and out of the United States. Uh, the only difference is that instead of being valid for 10 years, it is valid for two years. And the reason for that is the government wants to make sure that in fact, this was a legitimately entered into marriage in good faith and not a marriage entered into solely for the purposes of obtaining permanent residence or a green card. So how do we remove these conditions or transfer your conditional permanent residence card into a full 10-year green card? Well, 90 days prior to the expiration of your conditional permanent residence card, you would apply to remove the conditions. And that application is done with a form I-751 application to remove the conditions. It's not done on I-90. An I-90 is an application to extend your green card or renew your green card or various other reasons to replace a lost green card and, and things like that. That is not the appropriate application to file if you have a conditional permanent residence card and you're seeking to remove the conditions to obtain a full 10-year green card. If you do file an I-90 application instead of an I-751 application, that application will be denied. You could be left in unlawful status and potentially placed in removal proceedings and have to appear before an immigration judge. So you want to make sure you file the right form for your circumstances. Now, when you do file an I-751 application, that's a joint application between conditional permanent resident spouse and the U.S. citizen spouse. Both parties have to sign that application in most cases. And in that application, you would have to show that the marriage was and is still legal, the marriage was not terminated, and that the marriage was entered into in good faith, and that neither of the parties was paid for this marriage. Now, of course, you're permitted to pay an attorney to assist you with this process. The government wants to make sure that one spouse wasn't paid to enter into this marriage so that the other spouse could obtain a green card. In terms of what you would submit with this application, it would be similar to what was submitted when you first filed for permanent residence based on marriage. So you'd have to submit evidence of joint finances, things like a joint mortgage or joint lease, joint bank account statements. If there are any children born of the marriage, you'd want to submit copies of their birth certificates. Absent all of those, you would have to submit at least a few affidavits from third parties that could speak to the genuineness of the marriage. Ideally, you do want to come up with some evidence of joint finances, whether it be jointly filed tax returns, but ideally things like a joint mortgage or lease, joint bank account statements of active accounts that are being used to pay household expenses. You don't want to be in a position where you submit joint bank account statements with accounts that have minimum balances that aren't used at all. Grace service does not look well on things like that. Now, this application would be filed within 90 days prior to the expiration of your conditional permanent residence card. Filing it late or after the expiration of your permanent residence card automatically terminates your conditional permanent residence and could potentially put you in removal proceedings. So you want to make sure you're timely when you file this application. Now, in some situations, parties may have separated or even divorced. Now, if you're separated during this two-year period or even initiated divorce proceedings, divorce proceedings are not final when you file the application and the time you are ultimately called in for an interview, you would still submit the I-751 as a joint application and that would not be a grounds to deny the application to remove the permanent residence. I mentioned that you would be called in for an interview with in connection with this I-751 application. That used to be the typical procedure that you would file the 751 with the supporting documents and you'd be called in for an interview, similar to the interview you were called in for when you first filed for permanent residence, where the government will verify the bona fides or genuineness of your marriage. The government lately has been taking the position of waiving some interviews on 751 applications if the documentation is sufficient to demonstrate the genuineness or bona fides of the marriage. But it's still a possibility to be called in for an interview, so you must be prepared for that. Now, if you are unable to obtain a signature from the U.S. citizen spouse, whether it be because the marriage was terminated, you can obtain a waiver of the joint filing requirement. So, for example, if you are divorced, then the U.S. citizen spouse would not need to file or sign the 751 application with the conditional permanent resident to remove those conditions. Now, there are certain grounds in which this immigration service will grant a waiver. 
one, if there was extreme hardship, if the foreign national or the conditional permanent residence was removed from the U.S. The marriage was entered into in good faith, but just happened to end for whatever reason. And unfortunately, that is a fact that some marriages just don't last two years. Even though they were entered into in good faith, they may in fact terminate within that two-year period. Or another ground would be if the conditional permanent residence can demonstrate that they were a battered spouse or suffered extreme cruelty at the hands of the U.S. citizen. Another consideration is if the U.S. citizen spouse dies during that two-year conditional permanent residence period, a waiver is not needed. and Obviously, you would not be able to obtain the signature of the U.S. citizen spouse, but you still must meet the good faith requirement and document that the marriage was entered into in good faith. So you would still need to submit that documentation we spoke about earlier. Now, it's very important that you keep in mind and remember that a 90-day timeline because, again, if you fail to file within that 90-day period, you are subject to removal proceedings. If the 751 application is ultimately denied, you will also be placed in removal proceedings. So it's important that you consult with an immigration attorney to make sure that the application is properly completed, all the supporting documentation is there, and that it's timely filed so you don't put yourself in jeopardy potentially having the application denied and potentially being placed in removal proceedings where you'd be deported from the United States. Thank you and have a good day.